All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about compass mounts. It's compatible with the Virtual Fly Compass. It's compatible with the Logitech ProFlight instrument panel. We got two models of it. However, it's not compatible with every Slavix tabletop avionics panel. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the little intricacies of it. We've uh, we went through about seven different design revisions of this thing, seven. So some that bolted to the panel, some that didn't. I'm gonna talk all about it here, but this is all about the compass mount. So let's get started. So thanks for uh, tuning back in. Uh, as you know, we're always trying to come up with some new products. And uh, you know, this here is the compass mount. So it sounds a little silly, sounds a little simple. It really, th this was a, a problem that I had. And if you watch the other videos that we have in the series, uh, and by the way, I'm gonna get another plug in there, hit that subscribe button so you can always get fresh with our current content, but seriously, if you if you watch the other videos, you understand how I kind of got started on this whole business and how we make these things and why I make them. So this here is my office, okay? I take this panel off my desk after I'm done using it in the evening, and then I work the following day in my office, working from home with COVID on the camera 24-7. It's like living behind a Zoom camera. But anyways, so we do that, and then I get the kids to bed, and then it's evening time, and it's time to do some flight simulation proficiency. So just stay fresh with the simulator. This is actually the Simeonic setup. This is the Honeycomb Bravo and Alpha. I had this configured for the Citation CJ4 in Microsoft Flight Sim. It's totally awesome. You add in VATSIM, you go to Boston um, VATSIM air traffic control, and this is like flying a real plane. You, you get a procedure, IFR plan, release, the whole thing is totally cool. So I'm gonna get another video talking about how we do that actually in the sim. But my point with this is, is you know, I'm taking my panel on and off my desk. And so I've got this virtual flight compass. It's really nice and it's got a magnetic bottom on it. Okay, but the problem is, is I take this compass and it doesn't, doesn't stick to anything. So it can just fall off. I mean, technically I can stow it behind the panel because it's metal and it'll stick to it. But I finally had enough of it and said, we're gonna make a new product. So this is the compass mount, as simple as this. You take it and you put it on there. It's not going anywhere. So uh, really cool. That's basically it. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the actual design of it. So let me kind of explain the, the design elements. So obviously a magnetic base. Uh, this, you just literally slide it off. Okay, that's it. It's really that simple. So it's here. Uh, it's all, you know, tolerance, really nice powder coated finish black to match the top of the glare shield. And you literally just take it over here and you just slide it right on from the back. Now, if you notice here, and I'll flip the panel around here in the next shot, but how deep this is, this can actually hit a G1000. So if I go to try to put it here, it actually bottoms out on the back of the G1000. I'll flip the panel around so you can actually see that. Uh, but so here, here it can go in between above the audio panel because there's no G1000 there to hit. So this is the model for the virtual fly. Once again, we may come out with a slight revision, you know, try to tighten it up a little bit, but this is the version for the virtual fly. We also came out with a version for the Logitech ProFlight Compass. So this is the, the ProFlight instrument panel. And the ProFlight instrument panel is a, uh, is a nice piece of kit. And it does just a whole bunch of different gauges. So you guys may be familiar with it, but it's got this stand that everything mounts to. So this stand here, Basically, uh, it's got an angle. It's got a 20 degree angle on it. So if we were to make this flat, it would angle up at somebody sitting in front of their panel. It would angle up like 20 degrees, which is really not very natural. So what we did is we took it, and you can see here when it slides over the back, it's angled down 20 degrees. It's got a couple slotted holes at the top, and that's to mount the bracket right here. So you got some nice screws. Now it's all right in there. Hopefully you guys can see that really nice. Just right in there, pretty simple. So uh, so anyway, so it still slides in from the back, 20 degree angle down, and that means this face is uh, basically straight, straight on to somebody viewing it. So once again, I'll flip these around and you can actually see how it goes. But if you remember previously with the virtual flight compass, I talked about the width of the compass bracket, right? 
and this here is a lot narrower than this here. So the bracket itself for the Logitech is much wider and that limits the use. So you see how much wider it is. Now we can try to tighten this up a little bit in manufacturing uh, and, and get it a little bit tighter, but it, it is wider at the end of the day. And what that prevents, you can still slide it on. You just can't slide it on all the way because it hits the G1000s here, for example, in the back. There are other panels. We've sold hundreds of panels. Uh, we've sold a lot of custom panels. So if there is space in a certain kind of area where you don't have a lot of things protruding in the back, you can definitely use the Logitech solution or the virtual fly. It's a little bit uh, narrower. So there's probably more accommodating here for the virtual fly. Me personally, which solution do I like? I like the virtual fly solution a thousand times over and over again. Virtual Fly's compass is really great. It's literally plug and play with X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And there's a really uh, quick utility. It's also got a light on the back for backlighting. Uh, the thing really at the end of the day, it just works. And that's why I really like it. Uh, the Logitech Pro Flight instrument panels, you really have to do a lot of fuddling with them, a lot of configuration. Uh, I think there's a, a spade.next program that maybe allows you to do more different things. But I really just like the Virtual Fly setup for what I want to do, and that's really most preferred if you got G1000. So, this component here, it's gonna be available in the Slavic shop. I'll go ahead, I'll flip the panel around, I'll show you it from the back. I think it's really uh, beneficial to see this really simple semiotic solution from the back, and how I have the wiring management uh, dialed in. So, I'll go ahead and flip it around, and we'll keep the video going. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is the back of the panel. This is once again our semiotic glass cockpit, honeycomb alpha, honeycomb bravo. But, real quick, how clean is this cable management? I mean, it is super, super clean. There's not a bunch of unnecessary cables. The lengths are completely dialed in. I, uh, I was quite impressed, I'm not gonna lie. So I really liked it. But you know, these links to these cables are available in the Slavix Resources Center. So if you scroll down in the Resources Center, you'll actually see hyperlinks to, I believe I just got these on Amazon, really simple. Everybody can get them. There's not a bunch of affiliate links. Uh, they're just you know there for your resources. So you know this is a small one foot USB-C to USB-A cable, same here for the Bravo, USB-C to USB-A, four port USB-A to USB-C connector. So I really like USB-C because the standard is, I believe, USB 3.2, maybe 3.1, but I think it's 3.2. So it carries a lot of bandwidth, carries a lot of power, a lot of capability. And what I take then is one USB-C extension cable and I plug that into my computer. And so that runs the Alpha, the Bravo, as well as my Compass. And then I've also got one additional port available there if I want to plug in the LED lights in the Slavix panel. So then that consumes all four of those ports. Now here on the Simeonic setup, and once again, I'll do a video of actually how I fly with this thing in the CJ4 with Microsoft Lights in 2020, with VATSIM, and we'll actually kind of show you some of the radio calls and just really how realistic this is. Uh, but this is once again the Simeonic G1000. This is their latest version G1000. It uses the 10.2 inch iPads. It can also use a 10.5 inch iPad or 11 inch iPad Pro, uh, but it does not work with the 9.7 inch iPad. So Apple kind of phased out the 9.7 inch iPads. Simeonic kept the same outside dimensions, but they create a little bit more interior space for the newer screen sizes. So these are the 10.2 the inches. And, uh, and once again, the whole point with Simeonic is it wirelessly connects as a bridge to the simulator. So I can fly any plane that I want, whether it's a 747, Cessna 172, CJ4, and I can use all the functionality of the G1000 and it hands off all of that detail into the sim. Vice versa, the sim is communicating over the bridge all of the telemetry data. So airspeed, altitude, vertical speed, uh, where I am, GPS positioning. I can tune up the approach, uh, localizer, I mean, literally everything. So if I'm flying in G1000 like I am as a general aviation pilot in real life, it allows me to have fun in the sim, flying a CJ4, but then be able to stay proficient and fresh with the G1000 as I'm shooting approaches and things like that. So really, really awesome capability. Uh, you know, there's not a bunch of video connections. Uh, really, it's just power. So these USBs here, and what I used here is these right angle adapters. The reason that I use those is because it made it really flush, it made a really flush connection. So I have these nice right angle adapters and that makes it really super flush. So flush here, flush here on the audio panel, 
and these go right into an Anchor Power Port 5. And then that just plugs in with power with one, uh, I believe these are called the Mickey Mouse connector. I'm sure there's an international standard I'll put in the video, but uh, it, it plugs in with one power cable. So one power cable uh, for the Simeonic, that powers the bezels, powers the iPads, they connect wirelessly over the network uh, with the Simeonic bridge, and then one USB-C cable. And that's all I need to get up and going. It makes it ultra, ultra convenient to take it on my desk and off my desk. Uh, back to the compass mount. So as I mentioned, the kind of the depth here in the compass mount from mounting it to the actual uh, tabletop uh, avionics panel here. So you slide it in, you can see I've got some space here to fit it in. I just go ahead and push it forward and it just sits right on there. And then I can take my compass, place it right on there and I'm good to go. Really simple, really nice, really easy. Um, as I mentioned, the Logitech solution is a little bit wider. So you need to be a little bit more mindful if you're using that here. Uh, but you can see here how it's wide and actually hits the G1000 units. So you're not going to be able to push that on as far. I really don't recommend it, to be totally honest. But we offer it in the event that you got a custom panel. Maybe you don't have a glass cockpit, but a custom panel where you have enough spacing in the back where maybe you don't have anything interfering or sticking out here. Uh, so that's really the, the compass mount. Uh, really excited to come out with that. Just once again, trying to keep it fresh, keep innovating. You know, we came out with the RAM mount that you would have seen in front of the video. Uh, that was really popular. People really liked that. And then we've got the compass mount. So we hope you guys like it. Uh, we enjoy exercising our engineering muscle and coming out with these new designs and new bends and, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, we'll keep it up. Definitely uh, let us know your comments. Shoot us an email. If you're interested, check out the Slavic shop. And thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you. Stay level.